прошлой части. I think it is time we told our newfound friends what they have gotten themselves into. Hmm. You don't look like any elf of Rivendell. I'd wager you are one of the wood elves of Merkwood. You are correct. I am Legolas, son of Thranduil, king of the Woodland Realm. And I believe you are a dwarf of the Lonely Mountain. That's right. I'm Farin of Erebor. Strange meeting a wood elf here, when I so seldom see them at home. It is true. The distance between our two realms is not great. Yet it seems we seldom have dealings with your folk. More's the pity. I would be glad if our two kingdoms would forge stronger bonds of friendship. You are unusual in that, Farin. But I agree. In these troubled times, that would seem to be the wisest course. What brought you on such a long and perilous journey? Unpleasant business. My father sent me to report the escape of Gollum, a creature Aragorn had entrusted to our care. What can you tell me about this Gollum? A pathetic creature who long held the Ring of Power. The evil of the Ring has left him twisted and tormented. His only thought is to recover what was taken from him. How did Gollum manage to escape? I understood you Wood Elves were pretty good at holding prisoners. But this one got away? Not from a lack of watchfulness, but perhaps from too much kindness. We occasionally allowed Gollum to go about the wood under close guard. But on one of these ventures, the guards were attacked by orcs from Dol Guldur. In the confusion, Gollum escaped. We followed his track southward for many leagues, until it drew near to Dol Guldur. There, it became too dangerous to pursue him any further. So... Will you be on your way back to Mirkwood soon? No. I have been chosen to represent Elvenkind among the Company of the Ring. I will be accompanying the halfling, Frodo Baggins, on his journey south. It seems a little strange that, with a house full of his own people to consider, Elrond chose you, a wood elf, to represent the elven folk in the Fellowship. I asked for the privilege, and Elrond did not refuse me. I feel he may have been relieved not to lose any of his household to this quest. He will have need of all his strength, should the enemy move against him, Lardris. Why'd you volunteer? Partially to make amends for the loss of Gollum, but more so because this will be the final chapter in our long struggle against the darkness. And I wish to have a hand in our final victory, or at least to stand in the forefront of our last act of defiance. Good luck to you, Legolas. Hello! Always happy to meet a dwarf, and one from the Lonely Mountain, if I'm not mistaken. Aye, I am Farron of Arabor, and we've met before, Bilbo Baggins. Have we now? Oh, I'm afraid I don't recall. You'll have to forgive me. I've grown somewhat forgetful lately. 
We met upon your last visit to Erebor. I guess that was near 20 years ago now. And before that, I had the honor of sharing the field with you at the Battle of Five Armies. That was my first real taste of battle. I was hardly more than a lad at the time, but it was a glorious day. Oh, yes, the Battle of the Five Armies. A nasty business, that. Personally, I'm glad those days are behind us. But then again, it seems as if they may not be. Everything seems to be pointing to some dark times ahead. Speaking of which, I'm told that you and your friends did a great deal to help my Frodo and the Dunedan reach Rivendell safely. You'll have to tell me all about it one of these days so I can write it down properly. This Frodo, he is your heir, but I had not heard that you had a son. Oh no, he's not my son. Actually, he's my first cousin once removed. And also my second cousin once removed. Well, it's, it's complicated, but we, we share a great-grandfather. The poor lad was orphaned at an early age, and so I adopted him. Made him my heir, all nice and legal, while simultaneously dashing the greedy hopes of my odious relations, the Sackville Baggins. <laughs> He's a good lad, Frodo. I only wish... I only wish he hadn't inherited my troubles along with my estate. I hope that Gandalf and the Dunedain will keep him safe in the days ahead. Can you tell me how Frodo came to hold the Ring of Power? Well, yes, that was through me, I'm afraid. I found the ring by happenstance while lost beneath the roots of the Misty Mountains. I won it. That is to say, I took it from the creature Gollum. Of course, I did not know the full story of the ring until only a few days ago. I thought it was merely a magical bauble with the power to make the wearer invisible. I only used it to avoid unwelcome visitors. Imagine that old ring of mine causing such a fuss. I would gladly take charge of it again if that would help. Oh, yes. Gladly. Yes. You know... I think it would be best if we discussed something else. Now you call Rivendell your home. Well, the Shire will always be my home, I suppose. But this is the perfect place for so many things that I'm more than content to remain here. My days are mostly filled with my writing now. What is it you write? Oh, a little of this and a little of that. History, my past adventures, family trees. I've even begun a book of translations from the Elvish. Although lately I've been working on poetry mostly. Say, maybe you could help me with that. I'm writing a poem for Aragorn and I'm a bit stuck on a line or two. Are you now? Well then, let me hear what you have. Uh, very well, very well. Uh, the verse that's giving me trouble runs like this. Ahem. <clears throat> the light from the west is rekindled. Forth from Imladris it springs. Renewed is the hope that has dwindled. <clears throat> the light from the west is rekindled. Forth from Imladris it springs. Renewed is the hope that has dwindled. The scion of Westerness kings. Why, yes, yes, that's just the thing, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my friend, you should consider exchanging those weapons of yours for the poet's pen. The enemy won't be stopped by poetry, I'm afraid. Oh, I'm afraid you're right, but since these old hands are not much use with the sword, I'll just keep on with the pen. Though I'll need some help. Perhaps you could show this to the Lady Arwen. She has her people's gift with words, and this touches her deeply, after all. I'll take it to her. Ah, thanks very much. Uh, be sure to give her my compliments, won't you? 
I'll be sure to do that. Farewell, Bilbo. Farin, my lad, by my beard, it's good to see you again. When you left Erebor to stand guard on the Shire, Gimli and I feared we might be seeing the last of you. Now I hear you stood with the Rangers in the battle against the Nazgul at Sarn Ford, and bested an orc chieftain at Fornost. Good work! I can't take all the credit. I had Andriel, an elf of Rivendell, and the Ranger, Aradan, at my back. Reminds me of the old days when dwarves, elves, and men fought together in the Battle of the Five Armies. Let's not leave out the Eagles. They've been a big help to us. Well spoken. Thorin's quest and the Battle of Five Armies would have met disaster without the help of the Eagles. You're fortunate to have gained the friendship of such noble creatures. Your life may well depend upon your choice of friends, whatever kindred they be. Then I fear blessing being allied with an elf. I will speak plainly. I may be less than fond of King Thranduil's wood elves for keeping me in their dungeons, but I've no grudge with any of Elrond's folk. So I've heard you say many times, but the Elves fought beside us when it mattered most. You're right, of course. I can be a stiff-necked old dwarf, but it's time to set aside grievances that were long ago repaid. When dwarves, men, and Elves fought together at Erebor, we overcame legions of foes. But we face a far more terrible enemy in the Dark Lord. Standing together against Agandar may be more than just a good idea. It may be our only hope to save the North. And besides, it wouldn't hurt to keep Sauron a little distracted. If we keep him second-guessing his plans for the conquest of the North, it could only help Frodo in the long run. That's my thoughts upon the matter, too. Be the stinging fly in the ointment, as it were. <laughs> Only this fly's sting will be deadly. And it's time to be about your business. Goodbye, and good luck to you. Welcome, Dwarf of the Lonely Mountain. Welcome to Imladris. Are you in need of anything to help you in your travels? I have many things in my keeping that might serve you well. My thanks for the welcome, lady. Might I ask your name? No, indeed. I am Alare, one of Master Elrond's stewards. I help to manage the needs of his household, including arms and armor. I suspect you might have need of such things.
Even in strange surroundings, you can trust a dwarf to find his way to a forge. You are welcome in my smithy, foreign of Erebor. Seems like you're preparing for something. Can you tell me what you have planned? My fellow smiths and I are preparing for a great work. Soon we will be called upon to reforge the legendary sword Narsil. In the meantime, I have been sharpening my skills by practicing the art of imbuing gemstones. What can you tell me of this sword, Narsil? Narsil was the sword of Elendil, a mighty lord of the Dúnedain who defied the Dark Lord in the War of the Lost Alliance. He bore the sword in battle against Sauron, but he was slain and the sword was broken. Since that time, the shards of the sword have been an heirloom of the House of Elendil. It was to remain broken until the day when an heir of Elendil would go to war to reclaim the crown and title of king. That day will come soon, and the sword must be made whole once again. What do you mean by imbuing? Simply that certain objects have inherent virtues, and a skilled artisan can, through his craft, increase those virtues and bind them to an object for advantage. Gemstones are very strong vessels for this process. Sadly, appropriate gemstones have become difficult to find. The growing trouble throughout the land keeps travelers away, and our own people are staying closer to home. Maybe I can lend a hand with that. I'll be traveling soon. I would be pleased to have your help. I will provide you with a list of the types of gemstones that are of the greatest value to me. If you collect the stones, I am certain I could create something that you would find useful. But to be of use, the gemstones must be of the highest quality. Fortunately, we have as a guest a dwarf of the Lonely Mountain. Glowen is his name, and he is skilled in the appraisal of gems of all sorts. Once you have gathered the stones, allow him to examine them. He'll know if they are suitable. I've found a few things on my travels that you might be interested in. Take a look. Ah, these are work of Westernese, the lost land of Numenor. The men who forged these items were skilled indeed. You have the makings of a unique weapon here. Although these components were never part of a single work, I believe you have assembled everything I would need to make it so. The finished weapon would undoubtedly carry some elven qualities. What do you mean by that? Only that with a work such as this, the finished product is liable to reflect the nature of the smith who assembles it. If, for example, a dwarven smith were to complete this weapon, it might possess quite different qualities from the weapon I would create. It seems fitting that a Dwarven Smith should do this work for me. As you wish. I will help you, should you change your mind. How can I assist you? I've found a few things on my travel. Ah, although these com... What do you mean by that? Only that with a work... I'd like to see what an elven smith can do. Go ahead, if you're willing. Very good. I will get started at once. There, it is finished. May this serve you well, my friend. Oh, say, that's not bad work. Not bad at all. You have my thanks, Smith.
Greetings to you, Farin. Many times in the past have I welcomed your kin to my home. The bond between our kindred has at times been shaken, yet it has never been broken. Always before, I have placed my trust in Durin's folk, and never have they betrayed it. You will always be welcome here in Imladris, my friend. Yet I am certain you did not come here merely to exchange pleasantries. That is not the dwarven way. Do you have questions for me? I found this scroll at Fornost. I think maybe you should take a look at it. A wise decision. This is writ in the black speech of Mordor, a language I will not utter here. It is intended to instruct the reader in the use of dark sorceries. What is the black speech? A language devised by Sauron when he desired a single tongue to be spoken by all who serve him. He had small luck introducing it to the scattered tribes of orcs and trolls, but it is still used by his highest-ranking servants. Good thing we captured this, then. What will you do with it? I will destroy this scroll, at the very least. But wait, here I discover more. Listen to what is written herein, scribed by the hand of Agandaur, disciple of the great Lord Sauron, for the empowerment of his servant Wolfren and those others of his faithful who prove worthy. I will speak no more of these blasphemies, but it does say that this scroll is one of seven such works. So there are six more of these accursed things. Maybe we can find them all. That would be a great service to our cause. Should you recover them all, bring them to me, and I will ensure they are destroyed. You can count on that. In the meantime, please accept this in appreciation for bringing this matter to my attention. Perhaps it will be of service to you in your travels. One more thing. I found this book hidden away in the ruins of Fornost. It looks to be quite old. Ah, now this is writing of an altogether more wholesome sort. This was not made by any minion of Sauron, but rather by the men of Arthodyne, likely before the fall of Fornost. You could be right, for we found it in a chamber that had been long sealed. Can you make out any of the writing? Indeed. It seems to be a personal journal. And here is a name inscribed, M-A-L. Why, this appears to be a work of Malbeth, the seer of Arthodyne. Malbeth? Never heard of him. Many of the Dunedain race are gifted with foresight, but none more than Malbeth. He predicted the final destruction of the kingdom of Arthodyne, which befell exactly as he had foretold. I will examine this work carefully. Who knows what other visions are here recorded? It may be that we will find something of value to us in this time of trouble. You did well in bringing this to me. Take this in way of thanks. Happy to have been of service. Thanks and goodbye.
Ah, Farin. I am glad you are here. I feel I must apologize to you. When I was told a dwarf had appeared on the borders of the Shire asking to join the Dunedain in their watch, I was suspicious. I instructed Halbarad to keep a careful eye upon you, fearing you were a spy. Clearly, he grew to trust you. And after all you have done, I have as well. I am sorry to have doubted you, my friend. I'd like to know more about those chosen to be part of your fellowship. Who is it that interests you? What about Gandalf? What can you tell me of him? To know all there is to know of Gandalf would require a lifetime study. There is much about him that remains a mystery, even to me. Yet he is a relentless foe of Sauron, and without his vigilance, the ring would already be in the hands of the enemy. His wisdom and leadership will be of great value to the Fellowship. What about this man of Gondor, this Boromir? Boromir is the son of Denethor, the steward of Gondor. I had never met him before Elrond's council, but long years ago, under another name, I served his grandfather, Ecthelion. The men of Gondor are valiant and strong, and by all accounts, Boromir is foremost among them in courage and skill at arms. I suspect we will have need of his sword before our quest is through. Tell me about the Wood Elf, Legolas. It is fitting that we have a representative of the Eldar, the Elves, along with us on this venture. They have been foes of Sauron since before the ancestors of the Dúnedain first returned to the shores of Middle-earth. Legolas is keen of eye and ear, and he is unmasked as a bowman. His arrows seldom miss their mark. At least you will have a dwarf along with you, and one of the best too. You won't find a better companion than Gimli, son of Glowen. I have only just met Gimli, but I hope he will prove to be much like you. Stout-hearted and reliable, and a terror to his enemies in battle. What about these other hobbits? Is it wise to send so many of the little folk on this quest? We are asking much of Frodo. Until recently, he had never set foot outside the confines of the Shire. It will be a comfort for him to have the familiar companionship of his friends and kin in the face of so much that will be new and frightening. I have traveled with these hobbits, and they proved far more courageous and hardy than many would suspect. So, you go now to claim the throne of Gondor. Above all, I go to help Frodo fulfill his quest. For unless the ring is destroyed, Gondor will soon fall, king or no king. I take it you'd never heard of Agandaur before we spoke of him. I had never heard nor dealt with Agandaur specifically, but I know his kind. Years ago I served in disguise in the armies of Gondor, where I contended with the Corsairs of Umbaur, who were often led by those akin to Agandaur. These black Numenorians are a corrupt and wicked race. They worship Sauron as a god and seek the utter destruction of all who oppose him. Word is you've traveled a great deal. Is there anything you can tell me of the Etnors? Only that it is a dangerous and unforgiving place. My own grandfather Arador was slain by trolls in the Etnors. It is important we learn if the enemy is active in the moors, but we do not send you there lightly. Be on your guard at all times while you venture there. Good luck to you. Farin, it is good of you to seek me out. You are a stout dwarf, like all of Durin's folk, and your courageous deeds have shown your worth. We had one of the great eagles lend us a hand at Claw at Fornost. Right handy he was, too. I was thinking he might help us get rid of the ring. I don't fault you for thinking along those lines. Why not beg a ride from an eagle, fly far out to the west, and drop the ring into the deepest part of the sea? 
Such ideas were debated at Elrond's council. But there are many things in the deep waters, and seas and lands may change. We cannot think of our time alone. We must destroy this thing forever. This orc lover, Agendauer, do you know anything about him? Well, I know nothing of Agendauer himself. I have seen his kind at other times in distant lands. He is likely a black Numenorian and a master of dark sorceries. I came all the way from the Lonely Mountain to help guard the Shire. Should I abandon what I set out to do? You fulfilled your oath and protected the Shire when you were needed there, my good dwarf. Now you're needed more urgently elsewhere. With the flight of the ring in this direction, the enemy is looking this way and has forgotten the Shire for now. For now. But eventually his eye will turn once again toward the Shire, as humble as it is. Hobbits as miserable slaves would please him far more than hobbits happy and free. And there is such a thing as malice and revenge. Sauron will leave the final devastation of the Shire to his servant Agendauer, and that is yet another reason why you must find him and put an end to his designs. In opposing Agendauer, you are defending the Shire. What's Agendauer after? There are no mighty kingdoms to be found on this side of the Misty Mountains. What's Sauron afraid of here? Sauron seeks dominion over all of Middle-earth. His desire is to order all things as he sees fit. Even were these lands empty from here to the sea, still he would seek to control them. There is power in Rivendell that could stand against him when all others fall. For a time. And this is something Sauron cannot allow. When we first spoke, you said you recently passed through the Etten Moors. Can you tell me anything more of them? It is a rough and empty land, home to many trolls. I passed through with great haste, for I needed to reach Rivendell as quickly as I could. You said there was no sign of trolls. I saw neither trolls nor fresh signs of them. And that disturbs me more than encountering one. I doubt they've all packed up and left. Mindless brute creatures they may be. Yet they can be used and driven to even greater wickedness by a strong enough hand. Agendauer could well be forming them into an army. Do you think he's mustering the trolls for an attack? That is my fear. I would gladly be proven wrong. But my heart misgives me that somewhere in the Etten Moors, you will find them gathering and being prepared for war. We must know. Such a force could be sent against Rivendell, perhaps in hopes of capturing the Ring. I'll get my friends and we'll head for the Moors. If there's something to find, we'll find it. Magovanen, well met and welcome to the safe haven of Imladris. My thanks. I'm much honored to meet you, Lady Arwen. Juran's folk are welcome here. You have endured great danger and given us urgent warning of a new threat to the north. For this, we honor you, Farin. Uh, um, well, it was nothing, Lady. It's nice of you fair folk to welcome you show the modesty worthy of a hero. Estelle and my brothers have spoken highly of your courage at Fornost, and I thank you for your part in seeing to my brother's safe return. Please, take your ease and rest a while in our halls. 
You will find all your heart could desire, whether it be food, drink, song, or storytelling. Bilbo asked for help with a poem. I'm fond enough of the dwarvish sort of poetry, but this elvish verse is beyond me. He asked for your help, saying subject is a matter very close to your heart. Then it must be about Estelle. He is fond of writing verses in honor of his good friend, and therefore often comes to me for advice. You may leave it with me, Farin. I will give it some thought and answer him myself. Thank you. That's a relief. It's not for a dwarf to be writing lines about the kings of men. And anyway, I have little time to spare for poetry. Your father has asked me to scout the Ettenmoors. Then I will not keep you, but we may be of service to one another. I am helping my father brew a potion known as Miravor. One sip of Miravor can renew heart and soul and bring new vigor to weary limbs. I am in short supply of certain rare ingredients that may be found in the Ettenmoors. If I gave you a list of the ingredients, perhaps you could bring any you find while carrying out your mission. With enough ingredients, I will return the favor by brewing an extra flask that you may have for your own use. That's a generous offer, Lady Arwen. I'll keep an eye out for what you need and bring it back once I finish scouting around. This is rough country, no mistake. But so far, we've seen no sign of trouble. But the moors stretch on for many leagues. It would be easy to miss something in these rugged crags and valleys. Let us continue the search, but be wary. More than one ranger has been lost in these wild lands. <laughs> 